Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to track your calories the easiest way possible. If you're new here, my name is Alex Mendoza. I'm an online coach and I help busy men lose weight, improve their focus, improve their energy, and their overall life quality. So if that's you, you're in the right place. So make sure you hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. It's not that complicated. You're going to need two things. A food scale, you can get them from your local store or go to Amazon. They're about 10 to $15 each. You're also going to need to download an app to help you track your food. There's hundreds available out there. So which one do you choose? My personal preference is MyFitnessPal. Alternatively, if you're part of the evolution program, you can use our inbuilt tracking system within the app. I've been using this for over five years. It's super simple, pretty straightforward. You don't really need anything else. MyFitnessPal has two versions paid and unpaid. You don't need to pay for the subscription. It does give you a little bit more features and a little bit more flexibility, but there's also ways around it and I'm gonna show you how to do that. I've been using this app for about eight years now and I've never paid for it, so you don't have to. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is obviously download the app from the app store and then create your own account. I'm not gonna go through the setup process. It's very simple and straightforward. You should be fine. So I just played back the video to see if the recording was okay and my shirt was tucked in. I know it looked a little bit funny. I was going to refilm it, but I thought it was a pretty good intro, so I'm just gonna keep it. I'm going to record my screen to share it live with you guys, show you how to navigate it, track your calories, and just make the whole process easy for you. Right now, I'm filming at 9 p.m., so I've already logged my food throughout the day, but this is essentially what your dashboard will look like. It's a great place to see how many calories you have remaining for the day, but other than that, I don't really use it for anything else. Now I'm gonna take you guys through a step-by-step -step process on how to set up your statistics and data. The first thing we want to do is set up your calories and your macros. Under nutrition goals, you're going to want to go to calories, carbs, proteins, and fat goals, and you're going to want to manipulate these settings. To do that, just click the numbers, and it will allow you to make adjustments. So for example, 2202, make sure you click the tick button, otherwise it resets. Now with the free version of MyFitnessPal, your increments are only in 5%, which is okay. Don't worry too much about it. And you can simply increase or decrease your macronutrients by just scrolling through the numbers. Again, don't forget to hit that tick mark to save the data. Now to figure out how many calories, proteins, carbs, and fats you need to consume, I've created a separate video. The link is in the description, and I'll also attach an online calculator that you can use. Next, you're going to want to go back to more, scroll to the bottom, and you'll see a tab called steps. Click that and make sure don't track steps is selected. Now the reason we do that is because it will take the data from your Apple Watch or your Fitbit and then it will subtract the amount of calories burnt on the food that you've eaten. It makes it a little bit more confusing to track. So just disconnect it. When you've disconnected your tracker, go back, scroll down to settings and then select profile. When you're in this page, go to units and let's make a couple changes. Obviously, if you're in Australia, or any other country outside America, because Americans, you know, you guys like to use your pounds. Australians like to use kilograms, and if you're in the UK, obviously use stones, so you can make those adjustments here. Personally, even though I'm in Australia, I prefer to track in calories. The cool thing about America is that everywhere you go, all the calories are on the products. In Australia, it's all in kilojoules. Extremely annoying, I, I don't know who tracks in kilojoules here. Anyways, click kilojoules and then hit save. Once you've done that, that's pretty much it. You're good to go. Your account has been set up properly. Now let's dive into actually logging a product. There's three methods to log a product. The first one is the easiest and that's through a barcode scanner. That feature is not available for everyone. Some regions you do have to pay for it, other regions you don't. I don't have to pay for it, I don't know why. But if you can't use it, there are other ways to track your food and I'll show you how. But you're gonna want to get a product, for example, let, let me go grab something. This is currently my favorite protein powder by Emerald Labs. Shout out to Elite for sending it out. Cheeky plug, use Mendoza at checkout. Anyways, back to the video. Log the food, it's at the bottom of your menu bar, so just click log food. Alternatively, you can click the scan icon over there, so I'm gonna do that, and you'll be able to see the camera. Now, you're going to want to just turn the product over and just scan it as such. And there you go, all the information will come up. Serving sizes, number of servings, protein, carbs, and fats, all that information will be available. There's a couple of things that you can do here. Now, under serving sizes, to make it a little bit easier, you can click that button and then change it to one gram. Now, let's say you weigh it out and it's about 40 grams. It's just an easier way to track it. That's how you make some changes to serving sizes. A lot of people get confused on how to do that as well. And I totally understand it can be a little bit overwhelming and confusing in the beginning. When you're done that, just click the tick button to save and that will automatically log it in for you. Now on the screen, you can also select add food and there's a couple more methods here. You can scan a meal, but I think that's pretty much bullshit. I don't know what technology they use to scan an apple. So never really use 
use that, but you can search for food. So when you are searching for food, you want to use a couple of key terms. You want to get brand name. For example, here we want Emerald Labs, and then you're going to want to look up the actual product name. So here we'll go protein, cream, vanilla, fairy bread. It's a good flavor. Trust me, don't judge. Depending on the product, it might pop up showing exactly the name, but it will also show other similarities. So what you can do is you can cross-reference, see whether or not it's similar per serving. So we have protein vanilla by Emerald Labs, and I think it's per scoop around 154 calories. Let's go look for something a little bit closer. There you go, cream protein by Emerald Labs, and that seems to be pretty accurate. So we're just gonna want to add that. Another thing you can do is if you click scan a barcode and your barcode scanner isn't working, you can actually manually enter the barcodes. Cool, so I've typed that in, we're gonna click enter. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. It pulls it up, click tick, and it will automatically add it to your database. And I know what you're thinking. This is a lot of work, it's annoying, it's tedious, I get it. But let me show you a couple ways to make that experience easier, quicker, and more efficient. Let's say you wanna delete some of the products, click edit on the top left corner, select meal one, and then click delete on the top right corner. That will completely wipe out all the products under that meal. Another thing you can do is you can see these three dots on the right hand side of add food. If you tap that and click turn on smart copy, what you can actually do is swipe to the right and it will automatically add all the foods you ate the day before. It makes life a little bit easier. It makes tracking a bit faster. And now another thing you can do is let's say you wanna copy the meals that you had the day before. Top left corner, click edit click select all and at the bottom of the screen you can see copy and then you can select same meals and move it to let's say monday 26th of february if you're eating the same thing there you go makes tracking a little bit more convenient especially if you're eating the same thing or having repeating meals throughout the day it's important to track calories because it gives you flexibility you don't have to be restrictive with your diet if you want to have a cheeseburger as long as the numbers work you can have a fucking cheeseburger if your main goal is to lose weight it doesn't matter what you eat it's more about how much you eat so let's say i don't know for whatever reason you want my McDonald's. If you type in McDonald's on search, you can literally click McDonald's menu and it will show you the whole menu. So let's say, I don't know, let's scroll down. Let's grab some chicken nuggets because everybody loves chicken nuggets. So four pieces, click add, and there you go. It's added into my meal plan. And now I know that four pieces is 190 calories and I am over by 118 calories. And that brings me to a total of 2,300 calories. Now, if my maintenance is, let's say 2,700, I'm still gonna lose weight even if I ate the chicken nuggets. And if you click chicken McNuggets, it will show you the carbs, fat, and protein and that's how you can eat whatever the hell you want and still lose weight or make progress now having said that macronutrients plays a massive role in recovery focus performance training and overall mood so you don't want to get too crazy do your very best to stay within your macros dieting does not have to be boring dieting does not have to be restrictive do this because it makes it more sustainable you can go out eat foods try the cake now not all products will be available on my fitness pal but you can always look for something similar cool now you log the food but what the heck do you do with the information what you're going to want to do is select select more, go to nutrition, and this will show you the total macros you've consumed for the day. So right now we've eaten 185 grams of protein, 242 grams of carbs, and 36 grams of fat. Those are the three main macronutrients that you wanna be looking at. Yes, micronutrients and vitamins matter as well, but not as much as macronutrients if your goal is to lose weight. If you have a bad day, meaning maybe you ate a little bit over your macros, that's okay. You are going to click day view and change it to week view. Now this is the numbers that really matter. If you want to be a little bit more sustainable, so here you can see that my average intake for the last seven days was 193 grams of protein, 212 grams of carbs, and 37 grams of fats, putting me within my macro range. You can do the same thing under calories. On the left-hand side, on, under the calorie tab, it will show you your average intake for the week, which is 2,056. As you can see, I think on Tuesday or Wednesday, I don't think I tracked my food. On Wednesday, I did have a burger, so that's probably why I didn't track it. There you go, sustainability. I hope that helps. I hope this shows you a different way to approach your diet. Diet. Diets shouldn't be restrictive. It should be easy to follow and you should still be able to eat the foods that you enjoy. You just need to expand your understanding when it comes to nutrition and food selection. Before we wrap up the video, another question I get asked is how much is too much? How many calories over or how many calories under is a good or bad thing? And the same goes with macronutrients. Now it really depends on your goals. Again, the weekly data is what matters. If you're 100 calories over, it's okay. If you are dieting 50 calories over, it's also okay. At the end of the day, as long as your weekly average is still 100 calories within range, not a massive deal. It might show a couple hundred grams difference in body weight throughout the week. So try your best to stick within a buffer of 50 to 100 calories, even when you're cutting. Now, when it comes to macronutrients for proteins, I typically try not to go over 15 grams. For carbohydrates, same thing goes. 
try not to go over 10 to 15 grams. And when it comes to fats, keep that very minimal because one gram of fat is nine calories, whereas carbs and protein, one gram is four calories. So it's a lot easier to waste your calories if you're consuming high fat sources, which can make it a bit difficult for you to stay on track because you might feel a little bit more hungry throughout the day. I hope this helps. If you do have any questions, please leave a comment below. If you want a deeper insight on how to lose weight and build muscle, just watch the video below. It will show you the methods that we use to get results just like this. And if you're new to the channel and you found this helpful, please hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next video.